good morning. This is Richard Shu, host of Shu Untied. Uh, this morning, I'm really thrilled to have with me as my guest, Karen Ubell, who's a partner at Goodwin. Karen, welcome to the program. Hi, good to see you. So Karen, why don't you start by telling me uh, why you went to law school in the first place? Uh, I went to law school because I wanted to be a politician. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought at the time when I was, what, 22. Uh -huh. uh, I was a public policy uh, undergrad degree and I thought I was going to go into politics. And uh, so I thought I would go get a law degree to be on the Judiciary Committee and you know, really, you know, understand how to write statutes and what they all meant. And, uh, but then I, um, I did some lobbying at the federal level and I thought, oh, well, this isn't really for me. And then I did some lobbying at the state level as an internship and thought, this also isn't really for me. Um, and so thought, all right, well, why don't I just, uh, try my hand at just being a lawyer, go to a big law law firm and see what the world, uh, had to offer. And so, ended up uh, you know, just going the, the typical route of uh, joining a law firm right out of law school and figuring out what the future held. What, any particular childhood inspirations that made you think about being a politician or anything like that? Family of politicians, anything like that? No, no, no. In fact, uh, my dad is a lawyer and he told me not to go to law school. Huh. Uh, he said, don't, he said, go find something more interesting to do, which is of course ironic because he loves what he does, loves his clients, uh, you know, couldn't have been happier in his profession. So it was uh, not very uh, believable coming from him to say, go do something more interesting. I'm like, you are happy. You, you've had a great career. You, and, uh, <laughs> and, and you've enjoyed everything that you've done. So, um, uh, so uh, uh, he did not deter me. What, what kind of law did your dad practice? He uh, does public finance, so, okay. yeah. uh, so yeah. similar in some ways to what I originally started my my career doing, but just more so with a uh, uh, state and municipal governments. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when you finally when you finally went to private practice, what kind of what area did you pick? What did you how did you finally decide what you wanted to do? Uh, just did general corporate work. Uh, started my career in Atlanta and was doing um, just kind of you know private equity work, public company, capital markets, and securities work. That mm -hmm. was what really you know piqued my interest. Actually, was a lot of the um, the capital markets work. I I learned that I liked having this regulatory rule book um, and figuring out um, you know figuring out how those things uh, would apply. Uh, to all the different facts and circumstances of every possible company that we might be working with. Mm. Um, and so uh, that was really kind of uh, the, the interest point for me um, and where I was interested in securities laws and therefore where I ended up uh, ultimately eventually at the SEC. So, yeah, right. Well, tell me, how, how did that opportunity come up? Is that something you were seeking or did the opportunity kind of present itself? How did you let, end up at the SEC? Um, the opportunity, well, a little bit of both. <laughs> Um, so I graduated from law school in 2006, and so when the financial crisis hit, I actually was uh, laid off. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting to think back on that time. I, I would never describe it uh, as, uh, as a good time uh, because it was a pretty terrible financial uh, market. Um, and it was, it, was, it was a really hard, difficult time personally and professionally. But... Um, ultimately put me on the path to where I am now that I, uh, you know, never could have imagined. But so anyway, was laid off and um, was looking for other opportunities in the SEC um, while they were not hiring for a period of time once they started um, opening up their hiring again. Um, it was a great opportunity that I certainly couldn't pass up um, and, and, you know, had, had some contacts there that I had worked with at my prior firm. Um, who had been who had come out of the SEC and mm. you know really spoke highly of of the experience um, and of working there. So what 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 kind of role did you have at the SEC? What did you do there? What was your primary responsibilities? So I was in the division of corporation finance. So that's uh, in DC. It's kind of the the typical um, you know in, in the crypto world people think SEC and they think enforcement, but um, in uh, in the rest of <laughs> in the in the corporate side of the house. Um, it's the reviewing 10Ks, reviewing IPOs. Um, everybody kind of comes in at the same level uh, as an examiner and corpin. Um, so it was just you know part of a, a group that was reviewing the 10Ks and uh, registration statements for uh, healthcare, biotech, and insurance companies. Mm. Um, so I did that for about three years and um, was very very busy. Biotech was uh, very very busy in the capital markets at that time. Um, but then I was lucky enough. 
um, about three years in to have the opportunity to work in a smaller office within Corp and more of a policy office. It was called the Office of Capital Markets Trends. I'm told it doesn't exist anymore, but um, but it was uh, something that was created as a um, outgrowth of uh, the financial crisis of having an office that was really looking into the market at some of the macro trends um, to, to, to identify potential risks and where disclosure could be uh, more clear. So uh, one of the things that we that our office worked on was you know a sweep letter for structured notes, a sweep letter for exchange traded notes, um, some other kind of you know unique offerings that were ha happening and identifying some potential disclosure issues there. Um, but also we were just kind of the, the repository for anything weird or unique or novel that, that came into the um, commission, uh, which is where uh, when the Wickelos filed the Bitcoin ETF in 2013, it was, you know, checked all of those boxes of weird, unique and novel. Um, so that office was tasked with assisting um, on, on that review on the registration statement review side, different than the listing review side, which I know has been in the news uh, quite a bit, but um, reviewing the disclosure, really learning and understanding the underlying um, product, which was the underlying asset, which is Bitcoin and how that might um, affect the disclosure and then the operation of the, of the fund and, and related disclosures. So now you were at the SEC for quite a while. I assume you liked it. It was a job was yeah. fun. You enjoyed okay. it. It was a great place uh, to work. Um, it was, you know, it's, it's full of some of the best securities lawyers I've ever met. Um, it has a lot of really interesting uh, work to do, a lot of challenging work to do, um, particularly in that last three years in that policy group, really thinking deeply about what is a security or, you know, how do these crazy financial products that people are coming up with can we make that work under our disclosure regime and things like that mm. um and so it, it really was a great place to work and a lot of fun it just um ultimately was somewhere that you know the, the pace of government um was 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 getting to be a little bit slower than than what i was looking for at that point in time and just looking for a change um so i i was there for uh, for six years though so it was, it was a good spot for me and so is that what you made you decide to go back to private practice or or, or what was the, the impetus there? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, part of it was was really kind of looking for something, a, a new challenge, um, you know, only working with companies in the public, you know, in, in that time period when they're a public company and, and, and a register, registered uh, securities. Um, so there's a lot more uh, now uh, to a, a company's life cycle than that period of time and a lot more companies that never even make it to that point. Um, and so wanting to work with companies in the full life cycle of, uh, of, of a corporate uh, existence and a corporate path. Um, and then also just you know being on the other side of really advising companies through that instead of just saying, no, this doesn't work and waiting for someone to provide you the analysis and then you know kind of going through that process and being the one that's really kind of coming up with the answers and coming up with the analysis. So, uh, and also I just, uh, I'd been in DC for six years and uh, uh, it was time for a, a, a location change for me. Yeah. So, yeah. so what is your private practice? How has, how has that evolved since, since the <laughs> SEC till today? Well, how would you describe it? Uh, pretty significantly, I uh, certainly would never have um, predicted that the time that I spent working on crypto at the SEC would be so influential on where mm. I am now um but uh you know started off just doing typical you know silicon valley uh legal advisory work um from formation of companies all the way through to financings and everyday advisory work but uh when the the, the 2017 ico boom hit um i i knew that, that i had some very unique skills from my experience at the sec and that the sec would would jump into the fray to be the primary regulator of these types of transactions and these assets. And so mm. uh, really shifted my focus uh, almost entirely to um, the, the blockchain and crypto space. Mm. Um, and so now uh, for a while that was, uh, you know, kind of managing and balancing, you know, continuing to do financings and formations and everyday general corporate advice on top of how do I launch a token and what makes my company different by virtue of being a blockchain company and having a token and common stock and mm -hmm. all of these other things. Um, and now really focusing 100% on, on those regulatory issues and those product issues, um, working with my partners here at Goodwin on 
um, you know, the the payments questions, the broker dealer questions, am I, you know, am I operating an exchange or a money transmission business? Mm-hmm. Um, and still just working with with clients deeply on on the the product design, uh, which is a really unique thing in my experience as a lawyer to be so involved uh, mm. with the product design because how a, how a product functions and how it's distributed and how it's used uh, in the crypto space is so essential to that uh, analysis and the argument that you know, these things are not securities as they're, they're, they're functional assets in a marketplace or otherwise. Um, and so it, it's, a, it's a really unique position to be in and it's something that um, you know, I love doing. So when you were at the SEC, was crypto just getting started? I'm thinking it was really in its infancy or, or, yeah. had it already, or had it already been around for a bit? Well, I mean, it had already been around for a bit, but there wasn't nearly as much um, kind of innovation um, that we're seeing now, you know, back in, I mean, in 2013, Ethereum was, was you know, still in, in development, right? Um, mm. And so really it was Bitcoin predominantly, um, some other digital assets and blockchains were emerging, but not on a much smaller scale, even Bitcoin was obviously on a much smaller scale uh, when when that was initially filed in 2013. So uh, it had been around, but it wasn't a lot on, on a lot of people's radars and was just starting to emerge um, uh, on kind of the uh, kind of certainly on the regulators um, uh, radar screen. Um, so and certainly not nearly as much uh, scrutiny. Right. I think that. Um, there wasn't nearly as you know the, these kind of ICO offerings were certainly not something that um, that 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 was happening on the scale that came to pass. So mm-hmm. um, so it was it was relatively new, but um, you know as you've seen, apply, applied a, a very old test uh, to something that was relatively new, mm-hmm. uh, and that sure. continues today. So so you've obviously been in private practice. You've been in the government. You ever think that maybe you'll try going in house to actually join a crypto company? Has that has that ever has that ever occurred to you or, or struck you as something you might want to do at some point? Certainly, is, it, it's always a thought. But you know what I love about being at a law firm is that I have so many clients, right? And I get to see what all of them are doing and how all of them are innovating, and they are in multiple different uh, tracks of. You know, innovation and improvement on um, the existing blockchain infrastructure that we have or application layer or, you know, it's just incredibly interesting to be able to work with so many different companies and see things, um, you know, both on that micro level with what they're doing individually, but also at the macro level. What are the trends? How are things developing and evolving? Even the policy level, right? How are we how are we trying to kind of influence the policy? Um, that may govern uh, this industry and, and this and this innovative technology. And so um, for me, that's what I love. And that's why I will will, will remain, uh, remain a good win uh, in the private sector is just being able to work with so many different companies and so many different innovators. It's, it's just so much fun um, to see and hear about all of the um, really exciting things that are happening across the industry um, and being able to kind of help so many different folks um, along that path. Well, that's super cool. I really appreciate your taking the time. It was really great hearing about how the SEC experience worked out so well and, and ended up becoming such an integral part of your practice. And I appreciate your taking the time to share your story with me. Yep, thanks. It was great to be here. This is Richard Shu and Karen Newbell. Thanks. Thank you.